Hi guys, it's Cliff from Down Under. Um, just a short video on uh, preventative maintenance for a vertical milling machine spindle. This could be a Tourmark um, spindle or any other vertical milling machine spindle. Um, just a, a, a little idea for protecting your spindle bearings from coolant washing out the grease and um, getting a much longer life out of your spindle bearings. Alright. Okay, let's have a look up underneath the spindle nose. So I'll try and film up under there. Okay, so if I rotate it, you can see where the, the gap is, the rotating gap is. That is in there. The gap between the uh, bottom uh, diameter, rotating diameter, and the uh, bore of the spindle nose and that is where uh, coolant can spray up into that area and work its way up into the bearings. Certain types of milling, for example deep pocket milling in this mould I'm about to cut. Sorry I'm covering it up for um, confidentiality reasons but I'm going to cut a deep pocket in this pre-hardened steel mould and I'm going to use high pressure coolant jets to evacuate the chips out of the pocket and that means some of the time the coolant jets will be uh, deflecting or bouncing back up in, in towards the spindle nose and that can cause the coolant to jet up into the bottom spindle bearings. If you look at the drawing you can see the bottom spindle bearings are vulnerable to getting coolant past the spacer here and into that bearing. There's the spindle, a bit cack handed here, there's the, uh, the spacer and there's a gap, an annular gap around that bottom spacer there which will allow coolant to come up past it and if it comes up and under the surface here it can work its way into the uh, grease in the bearing and wash out the grease can ingress its way into the bearing and wash out the grease and then you're going to get bearing breakdown shortly after that. Now I don't know how often this occurs or how big a problem it is but I have read threads on the forums about this and people that have had their bearing grease wash out um, and I imagine some types of coolant will emulsify with the bearing grease and especially if there's particles of chips in there you'd get pretty rapid breakdown of that bottom bearing. I uh, don't know if I've left it too late or not but I've decided to put a uh, protector in there to keep the coolant from reaching that area so easily. So all it is is a bush that slips on to the spindle nose and is held in place with two grub screws so that it's balanced one there and one there um, and that deflects any coolant heading up in that direction, stops it from getting up into that annular groove. So essentially it's just a simple bush, a flanged bush. Um, I just used a piece of acetal but you could equally use aluminium or steel or brass, just whatever offcut you've got lying around would probably do. Um, these are the approximate dimensions, just below 85 millimeters outside diameter. Um, and a flange on there. I, I just went for two millimeters wide and uh, the bore is about 50.16 and um, enough of a section to take grub screws there of about 64 millimeters diameter um, and, and not too much uh, length only 13.6 uh, so it doesn't protrude below the bottom of the spindle nose Okay, let's look at it in place now. So it's just slipped onto that uh, rotating diameter. And I've just got it shimmed off the bottom of the spindle uh, large diameter with a couple of rulers just to use as uh, shims or feeler gauges while I tighten up those screws. Then I can slip those out. And there we are, that's it in place now. I hope I haven't left it too late. 
the bearings do sound a little noisy so it may be that I've already contaminated the bottom bearing grease with coolant um, but let's just run it now on maximum RPM so hopefully I've caught it in time to save those bearings only time will tell Got a slightly sort of hissy, hissy crunchy noise, you know, it's just a little bit worrying that sound. But anyway, I should have done this when I first got the machine, so I thought I'd post it for you guys in case um, you've got similar concerns just to save you a bit of time um, making something up. It's literally only half an hour's work and it could save you a major spindle rebuild in the months ahead. Just looking at it up close now, so there's two grub screws 180 degrees apart so that it's balanced. I just used M6, you could use quarter inch grub screws, something around there, and just nipped up to hold it in place. It's always nerve-wracking cutting a cavity into an existing highly valuable pre-hardened steel mold. You've got to trust the CNC process. It's always nerve-wracking. I can feel the adrenaline and the uh, your heart's in your mouth and you think you dare make a mistake on a job like this. So as I go deeper the coolant will jet up higher and higher and run the risk of getting into the bearings. This is why I have a uh, barrier push installed finally after a couple of years of ignoring the problem. You really want to avoid having chips or swarf left in the cavity because uh, the cutter will re-eat the chips or swarf there's pre-hardened chips or small and they're mobile and they'll cause the cutter to break down very quickly so you need to evacuate the chips or swarf out of the cavity before any damage is done to the cutter so this is causing the coolant to jet up vertically as it's flushing out the little chips scary stuff Trusting your probe for positioning accuracy, your cam program for the right tool path. And all you've got is a felt pen mark on the surface of the mould showing you that you're roughly in the right place. And it's not till you've finished the cut can you really be sure. If you're concerned about getting jets of deflected coolant spraying up into the uh, control panel, you could do something like this. I've put a cover over mine. Um, I've got a video just on that subject. If you go back about two or three years, you'll find it there. I just drop that down when I'm doing uh, coolant intense machining. So that about wraps up that uh, preventative maintenance video. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time. Uh -huh.